来了。这一分还是一样，中心技能很多，但这一次这次大蜜蜂女起来了。但是伤害其实一般般，又是打到位置，又是老位置，没人打，跟上一分一模一样。全面封锁布置也被拆掉，进攻方在 B 点打开了一个巨大的破口。虽然对面拿到了大量的信息，有总归有人会被打背。奈夫又一次的绕后，已经是提前到了。两个人走，方中方复活点。对掉一个，但是 Life 立刻补向这一分 ，Life 又是四杀落袋。嗯 ，A 点的暴动器已经是装下了，只剩下中路的 Y Y Y。几乎是一个被锁定的位置，远距离的一项头部运动，小心，开出来了，寻、哦、极线打不出来了，被无效命令抑制了。是的，无效命令已经启动了，他在阵中接几个人，先点掉一个，马上转墙，再接一个，飞神一百八还能再接一个，再一个一百八 ，U C B D 也被收到了，一发、哎，这一枪，就一颗子弹。So today we're going to tackle our final team and talk about how attacking Seoul Esports can win Masters Tokyo. Now later today as well there will be a video about my pickums for uh, at least the group stages and uh, talking about you know what I think might happen later on. Um, but yeah, we got our picture here of someone smashing a keyboard to represent uh, HMFI. Uh, and let's take a look at the players, shall we? Some great names in here. Bunt I think is one of my favorite names of any. I don't know what it is about the Chinese. Chinese players, but they always have the best names, and Bunt is definitely a top tier name. Of course, then we have HMFI ODZJC9Z7, um, a name so long that uh, I've had to make the little, uh, you know, photograph of the of the unknown man there a bit smaller to fit it all on. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of these players don't have uh, their pictures on the VLR, uh, other than Life, who used to play for EDG. We also have Yichen and Monk, another great name. Uh, and Ego is the coach. Now, one interesting thing I think about attacking Seoul is obviously not many people are expecting them to do well, but no one on their team in the last tournament that they played, which wasn't the tournament that qualified them for Tokyo, but none of them had a positive first kill to first death ratio, which isn't ideal, particularly when you're going against better competition. Now, in terms of their play style, let's just say it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some rounds will be quite nice, like this one, where they have a, a bit of a cool idea. They're on the defensive side here of Bind, and they're playing against EDG. It's actually a game where they beat EDG uh, fairly recently. And so they're on the defensive side here on Bind. And as we play this round forward, what you'll see is that uh, EDG, they're going to uh, basically go for a straight B hit. And you'll see here that they initially start to contest towards Lung. Okay, so that's that's kind of where they are contesting towards long, but then uh, as the smoke fades here, they they decide to go away from that, and this flash comes in, and then they decide, okay, we're not going to contest this then, and instead we're going to contest hooker, right? And these two on a have heard absolutely nothing, but just take a look at this cool idea that they're about to pull off, because as uh, Kan Kan gets himself into hooker just here, what we're about to see is they're about to take the TP. Distract Kan Kan, and these two are going to push up behind him. It's a really, really nice little idea. So someone's going to take the TP, Kan Kan's going to turn around. These two are going to push up behind it and manage to find that kill whilst they smoke off towards long as well, right? So we've got quite a few different moving parts here, right? Our Brim has smoked this off. We've got our players on the other side of the map who are taking the TP. These two are pushing Hooker together. You know, this is kind of like a, a team thing that has come together pretty quickly as a plan. And as we'll see, it goes pretty well for them. 一波前顶的动向，空的烟幕再落，前点技能置换，只是想清窗口，亏的。嗯，得抱团清了一下康康的一个位置，然后 Monk 同时也是就收掉了康康的一个人头。嗯，两边其实人数是有一个互换啊。对，但是爆能器其实偏向于第一场，站住之后是有更多的转点机会的。是的，刚才霹雳之火也是探了一下，外面还。B 场还是会有一个这个进攻方的人员存在，对，但注意这个 B 二楼外是有队员进行直断的，有一些让后的机会啊。是的，狂潮封了一下复活点的一个方向、嗯，现在把点内完全的包在里面。但是你第一时间的话 ，EDG 的人也是不太好进攻。哎，看枪过来拉，但是跑打并没有能，并没有能够致死。Life 点了一人之后，球就倒地。近点得加加快脚步，但是吃了一个闪光的这么效果，点了一波快速的混战，反而是由 AIC 清空了最后人数的压力。是的。But now let's come to a different map, Fracture here again against EDG, where they're on the attacking side this time, attacking all、uh, Seoul Esports. And initially in this round, we're already kind of you know 30 seconds in. They've tried to come towards B. You can see all the smokes here on this on this B site. But what's happened is EDG have actually pushed in towards、uh, and down towards B main and have managed to find the first kill here. So it's actually a 5v4 uh, for EDG now. So attacking Solar down a player, 
But again, I feel like when you think of Chinese teams, you think, you know, everything is chaos, right? Everything is kind of, you know, like instinct, chaos, mechanics. That's how they play. But here you'll see that they can, ha you know, show control. They can, you know, kind of have ideas. For instance, HM5 gets himself up in towards tower here and life goes exploring back towards this A site. Okay, and you'll see EDG, uh, you know, they got the B main control. They start to walk back as well. And uh, in a second, life, who is a, a very good player in his own right, hits a, a pretty nice shot there on Kang Kang and we end up in a 4v4. And now probably again, when you're thinking of Chinese Valorant, you're probably thinking, yeah, they're just going to run into the site and they're just going to, you know, plant the spike and it's going to be chaos. Uh, but no, right? They, they pause, they wait, they understand that, okay, probably these rotates are coming in. They've left H HMFI over here towards this B site and he's going to realize this is a completely free site. So they decide to come back instead. And it's this kind of, you know, patience that here you get a good example that they can do it, right? They can do exactly that. Uh, we then actually pop a KO ult for EDG, expecting this A hit to come in. But as we can see, they actually do just rotate. But again, they leave someone here on the A side, right? They leave life to come back and be this backstab lurk, lurk again. And so again, showing kind of under that understanding. They then have HMFI defend the site, uh, and he manages to find uh, that kill there on Smoggy. Uh, and then you even get this uh, little peek out from Bunt on the different angle here. And they play this very well, right? We end up in a 4v2. They just about get the spike down. Again, they protect the spike. They find that kill. We end up in a 3v1. You know, everyone's here now and just again, take a look at how they play this 3v1. It's going to be, we're waiting for a breach stun. We stun. We all three swing together. You know, really nice little stuff here from uh, Attacking Soul. You know, take a look at that. There was no way they were ever going to lose that 3v1. But then, of course, there are the Chaos Rounds. And let's come back to Bind for a round where EDG are actually on a save. Uh, this, again, is Attacking Soul uh, defending here on Bind. They're against a save. And let's just take a look at how this one plays out. Because, again, you will see things that you don't normally see in pro games, right? So, okay, we get a jump peek from Monk. We know that Smoggy's here, right? He actually gets tagged. Okay. Then, for whatever reason, and I really don't know why this is the case, Life then swings out, and he just kind of gets stuck. And it looks like he didn't activate his dash or wasn't ready to use his dash, and he ends up dying here. Out in the open. Now, normally if you get trapped in that corner, and if you look at the map here, you know, they start to actually push showers a bit as well. You know, you take the TP if, if you're struggling to get out of that situation. You know, you just take the TP, end up on the other side of the map, and just, you know, deal with whatever's going on then. I don't know what's going on. Then, I mean, this is just pure Chinese Valorant in a second by Smoggy. Pops his knives, updrafts over the dog, goes forward. I mean, that is kind of cool. But then, okay, Bunt is going to trade this kill. But then again, Bunt's decision here... As uh, a Harbor Cascade to come up to him is to just charge forward on his own. <laughs> I, 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 again, I, I, I mean, EDG just running through a brim volley, and Bunt uh, just decides to just charge forward, completely on his own. <laughs> again, I'm very surprised. Then on the other side of the map. They have absolutely no idea that this Viper is lurking up here. In a second, you're going to see HMFI just start sprinting into QQ and gives them a free kill. These rounds exist also in Attacking Souls playbook. And uh, this one's going to take a bit of a while to close it out. But yes, this very much also can happen from time to time to Attacking Soul. Perhaps more than others where you're just... You just see things that you don't normally see in most other pro games. And it can look... Yeah, really quite weird at times. Okay, but now let's take a look at some of their team stats. Uh, so the map score is actually pretty good. This is going back to the first tournament that qualified them for Master Tokyo and the most recent tournament that they played as well. And you can see they are a bit more of an attacking team than a defensive team. Um, and their overall win rates and their pistol win rates, though, aren't uh, too shabby. Now, their best maps, their map pool is kind of interesting. In fact, let's just go straight to their map pool. They have played Fracture and Haven an absolute ton, and they're pretty good at those maps. Lotus is another one where they're pretty good. Then they have a couple maps where it's kind of a bit, meh, like Ascent and Pearl, where, you know, meh, it's not amazing. You look at some of, like, the attack weight rate win numbers on those maps, and it's like, whoa. Um, and then you've got like the split and the bind as well, where maybe it's not too good. So they seem to have like three good maps and four maps that are not good to like, okay, maybe. Um, and when it comes to their team comps as well, you know, hey, Ascent and Haven, it's pretty meta. 
then they're pretty willing to go their own way, let's say. On buy, they play Double Duelist KO Sky Brim, like uh, the most aggressive comp you could potentially make uh, in Valorant, potentially. Uh, you know, on Split, they're playing this Killjoy, Omen, Breach Sky, like kind of weird as well. Uh, and yeah, you know, they're playing Sage on Fracture. They're pretty much the only team that I can think of that's playing Sage on Fracture at the moment. So yeah, there's quite a few things that might be a little weird. And when it comes to their agent picks as well, you can kind of tell that they aren't so much into the double controller meta that we've seen on quite a few different maps. Uh, that's not really their thing. Uh, they play more so initiators, you know, a lot of KO, a lot of Sovi, a lot of Breach, right? Uh, a lot of Jet, an absolute ton of Jet. Not so much Viper. Uh, they did, you know, they did experiment a, a tiny bit with Harbor, but not a, not a ton of Harbor either. Uh, you know, as we can kind of see by their bind comp, it's, you know, a lot of solo controller, a lot of sometimes double uh, duelist, sometimes, you know, double initiator, that kind of stuff. That's where they're going. So now to answer the question you're all wondering, how do Attacking Soul win Masters Tokyo? Well, they'll probably need a miracle. Let's be real. Uh, it's definitely going to need quite a few different things going their way. Maybe life just, you know goes full god mode i mean that that's one potential they you know they get shots like that from hmfi you know whilst he's fully blind you know this is the kind of thing that they're they're gonna need look at that sus boom bot there not not seeing how done uh yeah it's probably gonna take a miracle but hey they did beat edg they have beaten edg multiple times so who knows maybe they're just saving strats since they qualified for tokyo who knows maybe that's really what's been happening all along <laughs> 看绝望，全封锁是肯定要放置的。至于一波逼迫站位，这边的拼枪也是由曼谷完成了最后的收头，也是恭喜 ASE 以二比零的比分战胜了 EDG。